Hi, everyone. Hi, everybody. This is Sheila. It's um, now February the 2nd, 2010, and I'm still doing the re-recordings onto disc for DVD and CD of the original cassette tape recordings of my visits to Suffolk and Cambridgeshire from 2005 to 2008. Now, this one is... Um, the one I'm going to play now is me in the van... And I'm talking about us about to leave Suffolk, but days before we, or about a, yeah, it was, it was about a week before we were due to leave. I found more about the Stutvilles, and I found a place called Dalham, and that was a very enlightening experience. I mean, I didn't really want to leave at that time, but you know, you can't always um, fulfil things exactly how you want them to. They have to go uh, in a, in a different direction at times. But anyway, here I am in 2006. Things are starting to move a lot here now with <coughs> the Stutfields and the Isaacsons. Um, on the Cambridge University Alamuni, or however you pronounce it, there's a lot of stuff coming up about this, um, Stephen Isaacson, Henry Isaacson and other Stephen Isaacson, who were religious people, church people, and they they went to Cambridge University and they also, you know, did a lot of um, sermons and writing and things like that about times, their, their times and their thoughts, their philosophy, which I want to try and get hold of. Um, I've got a lot of unfinished business here. The Masons particularly, I haven't got anywhere with them yet. I've got Elizabeth Mason and her dad and that's it. And, of course, I did find, fortunately, an Isaacson family. That was very good. Which has now enabled me to shoot off right the way back to the 15th century and the Stutfields as well. Um, although they seem to disappear, they're not in any of the censuses. They're not mentioned on um, Latter-day Saints. Um, not in this country anyway, so I, I'll have to go over to see what we've got in the American records to try and trace what happened to them. Although, like I said, the Mel Isaacsons usually took their, one of their Christian names, the Stutville, to carry the name on in some form or other. And that has still happened to the present day. Um, you've got that Stutville name carried on, but they seem to have disappeared. Um, at, at present, I'm trying to locate Thomas Stutville, or Stutville, and I'm going up to Delham now, and they used to live in the manor there, um, and they had, they were tied up a lot with, I think it was, could have been Queen's College, Cambridge. Um, so I shall have to have my pilgrimages back here to sort these things out. From Newmarket, you go towards Moulton. I'm not quite sure what road it's on. Looks like a little, like a little tiny B road or by road. Towards Gaisley. You go to Moulton Gaisley. Um, on the B... I haven't got my glasses with me. 1085. Down until you see a sign, I suppose, to, to Delham. And I don't know what's going to be there. There might be a church there, but I'm off. Yeah, it is a weird feeling. I mean, Somerset is my home in many ways. Although I haven't always lived there. But when I think of Glastonbury, Wells Cathedral, Bridgewater, I, I feel at home. Right. I'm going towards Dalham. I've just stopped and take a picture of a working great mansion. To think that that could... Oh, my great-grandfather and all that might have lived there once, or did live there. And it looks like a church as well. It's a great big place sticking out from the hill. I'll see if I can get as close as I can to it. There's like a windmill as well. I'm just going around a corner. I'm going down a really small country lane. And um, there's like a big windmill down here. Like I said, um, until this morning, I 
might never heard of Galhan. Even now we would have had great grandfathers and mothers living there. Ask if that's the place. I've just come to a crossroad. There's Kent's head, Bolton and Galhan quarter of a mile. I would have thought that the mansion would be on a hill. Come out. Just coming into the village of Delham now. Of course, this is me driving in my lovely, lovely VW camper van, which I use to tour around all the, the villages and everything. So this is my first visit to Dell. I'm just trying to find where the church is, and like most churches, it is tucked away. Back to the cassette. This is 
where my ancestors live. Wow, it is brilliant. Right on the hill. The Stuttville's. That's private, but I'm going to wonder. Really beautiful up here. Really beautiful. Reminds me of Dalmain a bit. But it's strictly private up there. That's where the, the mansion must be. I'll see how I feel whether I'm going to risk that. Right, I'm entering the churchyard. Hopefully we might find some... Um, what are they called again? Stuckville's. That's how new it is in my head. There's Pearsons here, and Cooks, under a tree as you first go in on the left. The first gravestone as you come in on the right is William Norman, who died in 1881, aged 62, and his wife Elisa, who died in 1907, aged 86. Susan Pleasants. Don't know if it'll be open, they never are. I'm not expecting to see anything here, but who knows? There's a huge, great obelisk, I think you call it, great big pointed thing too. Underneath are deposited the mortal remains of General Sir James Affleck, Baronet, Lord of this manor and patron of this church, to whom memory there is a mural monument placed therein. Anyway, he, d he um, was born in 1759 and died at Dulham Hall in 1833. And behind, on the wall, are inscribed lots of um, initials. Yeah, so, it's a great big monument. I might have didn't look like got any for the... Uh, Stuttville's, but there could be, if I can get in, there might be something inside. Anyway, there's a, a, a Spencer, a goodie. Uh, who's this here? More Spencers. Uh, got to take care, because I've got a lot of tape. I was lucky to find this. Harlock. Died in 1852, age 70. Oh, it's so beautiful here. It is absolutely gorgeous here. This must be the manor, I suppose, although from the distance, it looked like the manor was further over. Well, I don't know. It could be that. That could be the manor. That big house, what I saw. Yeah, that is the manor, but of course it, it caught fire um, sort of a hundred odd years ago and uh, it was totally rebuilt um, it was even taller at one point um, the top floor being totally destroyed um, and going back to the 15th century it was probably you know far more Tudory back to the cassette that could be the house where my ancestors lived my great 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 grandfather Thomas Stutville. This is so exciting. Doing the tree, finding out all this stuff. Surrounding the churchyard. There's a high like garden wall that they have in these places. Um, under a big tree there's a stone to somebody. See a big house, like a mansion. Not as big as Dalmain, I don't think. It's quite big. It's quite new, really, so I think there must have been another manor the time they would have been here in the 17th century. 16th, 17th century. There must have been another manor, because that looks a bit too... That's 18th century. The Stutfels had the manor for th over 300 years, from like 1400 something up into the 
mid 17th century when obviously something happened and the Stutfields went over to America um, and were hardly heard of again. It was the male heirs all, all died out and all the, the women married Isaacsons including one of mine. Back to the cassette. Don't expect to find any graves here but you never know. Henry Swan, 1881-1879. Elizabeth Ann Neves, 1845 to 1925. I'm right behind the tower and there's a big slab here of Anne Beneath this stone are the mortal remains of Anne Affleck, eldest daughter of James Affleck, rector of Finden, Finden, in the county of Northampton. She died in 1852, looks like age 66. She being dead, she had something, prepare, I don't know, that's a big slab anyway. Really is pretty here. I see them just set, actually they're on the brick wall there are some slabs of people. There's a Dearesley, Edward Dearesley, he died in eighteen sixty seven, he's fifty three, and his wife Rhoda. Thomas Bowers, died in eighteen thirty six, age eighty, and Ellen his wife. Peter George son of Robert Breeze and Caroline and Nan. Died in 1885. Looks like six years. Percy Thomas Warren died at Dull Dulham Hall in eighteen eighty five, aged fifteen years. Percy Thomas Warren. There's somebody Rolf here. James Rolf died on the 30th of November 1902. And Rebecca Rolf, wife of the above, died in 19 something. Then you've got a great big Celtic cross. Somebody Rhodes. Francis William Rhodes, born April. 1850 died at something September. <coughs> I'm not sure. It's a great Celtic cross, anyway. This Rhodes family are, are of significance. They once owned Dulham Hall and they also were the founders of Rhodesia. So that's quite um, a bit of history there. Stutfills, I find, are interred within the church. A great big, huge one here. On the wall there's a memorial to someone as well. Can't always read them though. A plaque on the wall. It's going to take a picture of the back. So this is Dalham, or Dalham. Never heard of it, like I said, till this morning. Never thought it was going to come here. William Price, Jeremy Moore, William Swan, he 
even on the church there's a plaque to somebody, somebody of Dal Dalham Hall, Frances Watts, dairy and poultry woman at Dalham Hall, 29 years, trusty and punctual in her employment, devoutly attendant of the services of the church, diligent in reading the scriptures, having exemplified during a lone and painful illness. She was 72 when she died in 1841. Some beautiful stained glass windows here as well. Sort of a pebble dash church, but neat. Can't see any evidence of decay yet. Oh, there's a little bit here that I say that, and then there's a bit that's fallen down with the roof fallen in. I can get look right through a window here and see what was once a room. Yeah, that room was once the um, vault of the Afflick family. Um, the roof had gone and the floor had gone, so for some reason it had been left in disrepair and the Afflicks were buried outside in the churchyard. Yeah, something fell in. The roof must have fallen in. No one can afford to repair it. They started to brick it up. Harley Davidson came at one point. 
and then um, two women walked up a track. I'm hoping I can still get in the church, of course. They could have been the key holders and locked it up. There's avenues of trees lining the drive, and there's like public walkways. But there's this private road, so I don't know. You're not supposed to drive down that, but. Uh, and I'm not going to either, I don't want to get into any trouble. I'm just going to go and have a look on my other camera. There's an, I have got a, some new ones, but I didn't bring them with me. I've taken a few photos of the great big garden leading up to the house. I presume this is the manor, but I should imagine it was once built on an older structure. The 1700s. 1600s when uh, Thomas Stutville and the other Stutvilles in the 15th century had this place. I mean, they died here. No, I haven't got any more film. So basically, I hope I don't come across a grave now. That I can't take a picture of. I don't know why I don't keep the the new cameras in the van. And it's set in a beautiful scene here. It's on a hill. Newmarket's just a couple of miles away. Um, I just had to use my conveniences in the van. I've got a feeling they've locked it up. Because I'm sure that mesh wasn't across there a minute ago. Which would have been a shame. I should have gone in a church first. I'm sure that gate wasn't shut. Going up to the church now. In the little porch, this is St Mary's Church, Dalham. Um, I'll take the vicar's name. He might be able to give me some information. Reverend Stephen Mitchell, All Saints Vicarage, Gaisley. 01638 552630. Email <coughs> is smitch4517 at aol.com. I bet you they've probably locked it up. Oh no, it's open. Oh, they must have had a wedding here. It's full of ribbons and flowers. Oh, it's so pretty and I haven't got a camera. I do go back a couple of days later with a camera and take lots and lots of photos, which I will put on with this tape. I've got another tape there. It's very pretty. Beautiful stained glass windows everywhere. And, and where someone's had a wedding, there's all flowers decorating the aisles. Wooden benches with carvings on the top. I'm just walking up towards the aisle now, up the aisle towards the altar, to have a look at some of the memorial slabs of marble on the walls. There's Colonel Frank Rhodes, he's up there. There's John Affick Esquire of Nettle, and of Nettle, his wife. He died 1718, aged 67, and she died. 1729, age 66. Like I said, it was the 16th century when the Stutfields were here. I don't know if they have... Oh yes, I've just found a great big memorial. What a shame I haven't got my camera. Right by the altar. There's even um, little carved figures, head figures of people. There's a coat of arms up the top. Um, I can't describe it. Um, it's got three birds on it. Looks like a lion. And maybe three crowns. And it's of um, here. Something or other. It's, isn't it? it's in Latin, I'm afraid. I'm, I can only just pick up Martin Stutfell Esquire. Um, something of Thomas Stutfell. It's all in Latin. Um, 
generosity, something or other. At, yeah, uh, I'm trying to pick out the words. Something about it looks like America. Uh, Father Draco, something or other. Do 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 do. Oh, it looks like October. Um, but anyway, there's a large marble plaque. Now, Sir, France, Sir, Sir Martin Stutfield was a friend of Sir Francis Drake and he went on one of the voyages with him to America. And I have got the full inscription of that Latin prose on there, um, which is obviously on my family tree site. So, yeah, the follow-up. I've done a lot of follow-up on these plaques. Black pillars, two skulls. There's... Um what looks like an Oliver Cromwell hat pitched above it. Below on the slabs, there's four, there's eight little um, choir boys each side of the altar, and that is to the Stupvilles, right by the altar. Um, and Martin, Martin it says, and Thomas. So they are remembered here. Then, oh yes, there's another great big plaque right by the altar again. I should have to bring Zara here. She can't miss this. Um, this is a stone-carved pillar-type structure with a thing on the top. And it says, in big writing, Here lieth Thomas Stutford, Esquire, late lord of the town and patron of this church, and Anne, his wife. They continued and kept hospitality in their manor place here, 40 years together, and they had, it looks like either 15 or 18, it must be 15 children, and they had seven sons and eight daughters. He died the 11th of May, 1571, at his age 65, and the said Anne, and then there's no more written, that is brilliant, that is our ancestors. And that lies in a, like a little um, alcove with shields that were obviously been scratched and defamated by the Puritans. I shall have to come back, I shall have to bring Zara back here to see this, because she never saw Zaka. So that's it, they were right up by the altar, these people. And I hope I've got this all on tape. Yes, I have. Then you've got um, another slab of the, near to the church are deposited the mortal remains of Sir James Affleck, Baronet. Affleck is spelled A-F-F-L-E-C-K. And General and His Majesty Forces. So I'm just going back to the Stuckvilles again. My great-great-grandmother going back was called Anne and her mother was called Anne as well. So that's quite interesting. She had a lot of brothers and sisters. So on the other plaque, it does mention something about America, but it's all in Latin. And so whether they moved away, and um, I'm not sure. On the floor, you've got lots of... Um, here lies the body, daughter of Thomas, looks like Cornwall, and Francis, his wife died in 1690 in the memory of Eliza Pulleen, daughter of Henry and Eliza Pulleen of Carlton Hall in the county of York, who died in the 19th year of her age, 1788. Then you've got the Reverend Gilbert Affleck, late rector of this parish. He died in 1763, age 51. And Elizabeth, his wife, died the 9th of January, 1775, aged 53. And then there's an Eliza Affleck, eldest daughter of the Afflecks. She was only 21 when she died. There's lots of little things in here. Frances Cornwall, the daughter of Thomas Cornwall, rector. And Frances, his wife, who died 1688, aged 6 years. And there's another one which is not so easy to see. Oh my goodness. These are my ancestors here. I can't believe it. I must bring Zara here so we can take some more pictures. Let me phone her now. Right, 
I'm in this Dalham church. And, um, oh, you ought to come and see it, really, though. We've got all the ancestors right up and right up by the altar, and we've got huge, great plaques of them, of Thomas Stutville and Martin Stutville, and it's got some in Latin about America, and they're in the floor as well. And I've been up around the mansion having a look, you know, the manor house. Yeah, they're right up here. I'm right up by the altar at the moment. It's so pretty. It's really pretty in here as well. It's, um... There's been a wedding and there's white flowers everywhere hanging from every place you can hang them. Yes, yeah, so they are mentioned and they're, they're buried here where I am now. That's the Stutbells. And they, one lot had 15 children, seven sons and eight daughters. Yeah, I just thought I'd let you know because it's really, you know, this is quite like when I went to Dakar that time, remember? So, you know, this is um, quite a find, really. I mean, this time last night, I'd never heard of Dalham. Do you know what I mean? It's like happened overnight. Oh, no, it's lovely. Yeah, well, I've just found our ancestors, and I'm going back to the 15th century. I don't know, you know, it's not, not far from you, Mark. It isn't far to come if you wanted to come up and see it another day before we go. Pictures. You could bring Brandy up here, be alright. Anyway, I'm going to go now because I'm carrying on doing the recording. Right, over the um, where the bells are and the steeple is, you've got a great big plaque on the white background, painted black, and it says, To the honour of God. This steeple was re rectified in the year of our Lord, 1625, by Sir Martin Stutville, Knight, Patron of this church, also Thomas Warner, Doctor of Divinity, Rector of the same. Um, the inhabitants and landholders of the town of Dalmain, assisted by the religious bounty of divers, baronets, knights, ladies, gentlemen, gentlewomen, and other of the patron's friends whose offering at his request yielded to this work so much money, the whole charge amounting to £400. So one of our ancestors was responsible for the steeple of this church. I've just phoned Zara and told her. I'm carrying on looking now. Yeah, next to the church, if you go through a little gate, there's also a more modern cemetery of people as well. Um, Goslings, nuns, baileys, coxes. I've just found a sizer as well. In loving memory of Julia Sizer, who died the 27th of February 1953, aged 81. And Edward Sizer, who died the 28th of August 1959, aged 90. Well, fancy that. Not only have we found a whole new family, I found a sizer. It's a wooden cross as well, with a big white board with the letters in black. Very simple cross. Um, somebody must come every now and again and uh, renew it. Who would have thought that? Oh, there's some more sizers. Oh my God, there's Frederick. George Sizer, who died the 7th of February, 1966, aged 65. Wow, Sizer's as well. And a Kemp, and a Sorrel, and a Cutts, Hannah Cutts, C-U-T-T-S, who died the 3rd of March, 1951, aged 79. Murals, Clarks, more Clarks, more Kemp's. Uh, a Mansi. So I didn't even know this bit was here until just this moment ago. When I've been wandering about. Pearson, Cornells, Susan Gabriel Cunliffe, 1927 to 1999. It's quite a new one. Wow, the sizes, two sizes of graves. And also from here, I must come back because I need my camera up here. 
there's another view of the manor house from the back here. Anyway, carrying on, there's some um, Holfords, Goodalls, Rolfs, it's a common family around here, Cooks, Greens, Preens, Collins, Bardwells, Martin, Spears, Pearson, Bullock, Scott, Rising, Hull, Cornford, Carpenter, Pierce, Bayford, and David Bremner, 1945 to 2005. I just can't get over that. Typical that I didn't bring a, another film with me, isn't it? I'm going to have to come back just to get pictures of those monuments inside the church for a start. I'm making discoveries every five minutes here. I shouldn't be leaving here. I'm just going back to have a look at the back of the house. I'm in this little new part. There's, um, people get buried here. Oh, there was a little cross I just passed all on its own. It's beautiful here, mind. Of course, I want to go back with the video recorder as well to get the, another perspective because um, at the moment I'm putting the audio together with photos, um, which is quite time consuming, but it is really quite personal as well because you have to pick and choose. But um, I do want to do a video eventually. can't describe it. Oh, it's great space reserved. There's even more angles of the church from here. I need to get Susanna Margaret Phillips, James Perrot Phillips. Now this is Phillips family, I think. Of the, uh, I was talking to a young man who was um, the brother of the bride who married yesterday, and he told me that uh, the house is actually lived in by the Phillips family um, to help maintain it. I'm just having a wander around at the back lovely oak trees and cows. Another beautiful view of the house. Apparently it was once another story higher. But there'd been a fire um, sometime in the 19th century and they lowered it. But apparently it was once much higher and it was weird from the view I had from the valley. It looked higher. And this is a beautiful view and I've got no camera. I'm just having a little wander about because it's so beautiful. I'm going to have to bring Zara here tomorrow. Oh dear. It's like a feeling of urgency because we're going back to Somerset and I'm finding all this. And all the records in the university and everything I've got to abandon. It's so beautiful all this. It's like a walled garden bit. There's a little steps with monumental urns going up to a little place where you could stand and take more pictures. Very pretty. And our ancestors lived here, even if it might have changed a bit the structure since the 15th century. I'm sure it has. It's probably a wooden building then. big 18th century place now, but it's on the same site. Yeah, they've got lovely little gardens. I'm just looking over the hedge there. Lovely view of the church from this side as well. And the house. In some respects, the house reminds me of the brickwork of Moorhaven Nursing Home. It's that sort of same red brick. Obviously, it had to be rebuilt after the fire. Um, it's so peaceful here. It's absolutely gorgeous here. Just imagine being able to live here. But anyway, the Phillips family still run this place. And they're farmers. They have a lot of land around here. And they live there. Well, I think there might be some flats, he said. Um, but they've got, like, bushes, which have been pruned to nice little shapes.
Sydney is a lovely place. I'm just get breathing in the atmosphere, really. I mean, in the lawn area at the back of the house, they've got lots of little privet bushes which have all been shaped, shaped like little um, ornaments. Beautiful cut lawn. Um, a nice big cedar tree. <coughs> Not a sight of anybody. Very, very nice. <coughs> I mean, on top of the walls you've got like little urn pots. That look like little acorns on top of the, the, the walls, the pillars. <coughs> After the those size of graves up when I get back. So I had no idea we were going to have sizes here as well. The plot thickens. I'm just going back into the churchyard to... I haven't finished going around it yet. Picked up a couple of leaflets, some about the history of Martin Stutville and his family. So I'll get that put down on tape as well. Yeah, so I've got to come back tomorrow to take some more pictures and show Zara. I need someone else to see this. I'm just going to finish off looking at the rest of the churchyard in a minute. Written in big high letters on top of the tower, I've just noticed. On a black pebble dust surround, but this is carved out. It's reverence my sanctuary. Written in big letters. I think you can see it for miles, that's that. <coughs> the church is always open, by the way, as well. Plumber, a plumber, a Dyson, and if it's the original, Edward Dyson, he died in 1860, another Edward Dyson, Dyson also died in um, 1862, looks like 865, there's a Dyson there, God I can't get over this church, it's beautiful inside. I never expected this. William Pleasant. Oh, I'll see you tomorrow, William Norman. I don't want to leave it. It's beautiful. It really is beautiful. This sums up my trip to Somerset, to be quite honest. This sums it up. I started on a high and I'm finishing on a high. But I'm certainly coming back. 24 hours ago less, I never even knew. I, re I was curious about the Stupfell name that followed most Mel Isaacsons. You know, like Stephen Stupfell Isaacson. I wonder where the Stupfell came from. I knew it was um, an Elizabeth Stupfell who married um, an Isaacson. In fact, quite a few of them married Stupfells. <coughs> but like I said, this really sums up visit to this beautiful place. It's almost when I saw that house from a distance it looked like it was bigger. I was looking for a bigger place but when I got here it wasn't as big as it looked from a distance. With the church right next to it and the old building apparently was a stable. Right near where my van's parked and the other side of the church wall or this side of the church wall Tower end. There's a lovely wooden bench dedicated to, in memory of Dorothy and Wallace Beckham, who sat here often, and it's March 2005. And I can see why. I've got my van parked slightly in the way, actually, but there's just a beautiful view here. A young man came into the church to water the his, his, his wedding flowers. We had a little chat about the place, and I filled in a bit of history. He's in the army, so he goes wherever he's sent. A bit posh, boy. A bit posh. I'm just going to sit here and read about the history and have a, a naughty cigarette. And I'm going to sit on this bench and have a read. I might tell something. There's not much tape left. Like I say, what a beautiful end to our six, seven months here. Like a, a proper old English village, like it might have been a hundred 
years ago. It's quiet. It's all little thatched. Every house is thatched. And um, the Stuckville, Sir Stuckville, who was a knight, owned all this. It's got a path with a stream. People, you know, leaning against their gates, um, having a chat.
roots, your ancestors. Now the Stutfields came over with the Norman Conquest. Uh, uh, on the internet, I got them back before Jesus. I mean, it's a bit weird, that was, that particular bit of information, but there's, we've traced them to France, Germany, mainly. But then somebody's gone back even further and located them right the way back to Israel and all that. Anyway, I, I've been back once since. In 2008, I went back and visited it again. Went in the local pub and went round the church. It was, still had a magic feeling for me and still does. And, of course, um, since then, I've also made more discoveries. I've got other places where, I, where I've got to go, like Clare, Clare Castle and all around that way and other, other places that are on my list. But I will be going back and I'm hoping to go back this year. Only for one of my visits, short visits though. But there is a possibility later on, in a couple of years time, I might decide to go and stay up there again for a year or so. Why not? Anyway, this is Sheila. I've given up smoking, by the way, ten months now. And I do feel better for it. I've got a lot of family tree to do, so I've got to hang on for quite a while yet. Over and out.